In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today's message is taken from the Epistle Lesson from 2 Corinthians chapters 5 and 6 that was previously read by Nicole. In the name of the suffering Savior, Jesus Christ, dear people of God. There's an old story told of a meeting conducted by the devils in hell to determine the best means of destroying the souls of people. One of Satan's helpers suggested that they tell people that the Bible is only a fable. It's just the foolish prattling of humans and not the word of God. Another demon rose to say that the best way to persuade people about this Jesus Christ was to just to tell them that he was a man, only a man, a good man, but only a man and relevant only for his day. A third devil declared that he would tell humans, well, there is no God, there's no Savior, there's no heaven, there is no hell. Satan knocks down each of these suggestions. He calls them nonsense and tried, but not without much success. But then came a fourth devil, wise as a serpent, but certainly not harmless as a dove, who said, use this message, tell everyone, yes, there's a God, there's a Savior, there is a hell and a heaven, but tell them there is no hurry. Tomorrow will do. Tomorrow will be as today. And that was the devil they sent. And he's been hawking his wares ever since and how effective that message has been. Because of Satan's lies that there is always time. There are, all, there are so many half-committed Christians who sit on the sidelines of the faith. Later is their watchword to every call to commitment to live and to share the gospel of the Savior Jesus. There's plenty of time next week next year. As theologian Halford Laycock once said, the trouble with the church is not liturgy, it's lethargy. It's against such lethargy that the Apostle Paul cries out in today's epistle lesson, behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week or next month or next year, Paul proclaims now. The message we hear from Satan and his minions is just the opposite. There is no hurry. Tomorrow will do. Satan walks our streets. He sits in our church pews. He whispers in our ears talking of heaven and hell, God and Christ. He talks about Christian commitment, but always saying, but you don't have to think about that now. Perhaps the psalmist had that experience in his life with this voice of apathy to God, and here is his cry against it. Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to Christian commitment to share the good news, perhaps the biggest reason for apathy is that tomorrow has always come. Thousands of tomorrows in the time of the average life. So when tomorrow doesn't come, we'll never believe today that it won't. That makes apathy and indifference so easy for today. See how differently the psalmist goes at it. Teach us to number our days, to number them. Count them carefully, one by one as they come and go. To use them wisely, one by one, because that's all the life on earth we have. There is a reason for not sitting like spectators, watching the constant pageant of life go by, but instead getting involved in the heartaches and the hallelujahs of people other than ourselves. To be committed, active Christians. The reason being that when the sun sets on today, it sets on it forever. We have one day left to live and share the good news of Christ the Savior. 
When the great church father, St. Ignatius, heard the clock stride, he is reported to have said, Now I have one less hour to answer for the Lord. What then shall we do, brothers and sisters, with this person we call the Savior, with this Jesus? What shall we do with his cross, his call to commitment, his call to discipleship? How committed was this Jesus to us? He gave it all. He humbled himself to become a human being, to be born of a virgin in humble circumstances. He lived a perfect life in a very imperfect world, and he did it for you and for me. He offers himself up as the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, paying for your sins and mine, rising victorious even over death on the third day. What shall we do with this Jesus? What shall we do with this echo Jesus arouses in us, way down deep in us, making us want to rise up and to follow him, to be a Christ follower, wanting to commit ourselves to feel the joy of living a life of discipleship. But what shall we do with this terrible maybe that besets so many Christians. Maybe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Maybe Jesus does have what our souls thirst for. Maybe. So we take it under advisement. We follow far off, not quite committing ourselves, timidly, neutral, no hurry, lukewarm at best. Tomorrow, Satan whispers in our ear, tomorrow will be the same. And the words of our Savior Jesus should haunt us as he speaks to the church at Laodicea and to each of us in the book of Revelation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Indecision and half-heartedness have no place in God's kingdom. While we hesitate, while we ponder, while we wait for tomorrow, the inner battle is forming that can easily defeat us. Take your time, Satan's messenger says. In the meantime, our time is being taken. Again, hear the plea of the Apostle Paul, Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. There's an old fairy tale about a Persian prince who divided the remainder of his life into four decades. The first for travel, the second for the affairs of state, the third for friendship, and the fourth for God. But he died in less than 20 years. No, no, we respond. We won't have that. Most of us are not going to die today, and we know it. And you know something? We're probably right. So that's not the important thing. The important thing is had the prince not died in less than 20 years, those years would have died in the prince. We may not die today, but today will pass away. When we put God off, we put God out. The commitments we do not make are shaping our person's living our lives, ordering our eternity as surely as the ones that we do make. We go about our ordinary pursuits of everyday living, sleeping, eating, doing our job, raising a family, being a good spouse, a good citizen, a good employer or employee, whatever it may be. But in the midst of all that, God calls us to be his people, to do his will, to respond to his love in the Savior, Jesus Christ. How often is our response weak? How often is our commitment half-hearted? If we feel it isn't wrong as long as we're not actively evil, then we fail to see that in God's call to be actively Christian, there is no such thing as neutrality, no such thing as tomorrow. There are no silent saints, 
Jesus said, He who is not with me is against me. Brothers and sisters, in our baptism, we have been set free from sin, death, and devil. We have been called individually to a life of discipleship, of commitment, of living and sharing the Savior who offers not only victory in this life over sin and death, but life eternal with our Heavenly Father in heaven. And he offers it freely and without cost. Last Sunday, I gave you a little homework to do. Remember what that homework was? came on a sheet like this. And by the way, we have more of those sheets left on the usher table, should you need it. And I ask you to write down the name of someone you know who is not in a faith relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I challenged you to pray over that name every day, lifting up that person to the Lord, asking God to prepare that person's heart to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. Think about it. That is part of our mission statement. Our mission statement as we live in God's grace, as we seek to love, equip, and share. My prayer is that I hope you will continue to pray over this potential brother or sister in Christ this week as the Holy Spirit prepares each of us to be his verbal saints. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.